It's awful late, Paul. Don't look like nobody's up. Yeah, so it better be. I feel like I've been glued to that saddle. Evening. What do you want? We, uh, like to bet down our horses. <laughs> you fellas know what time it is? Friend, we sure do. We've been riding since uh, since sunup. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm not taking care of no stinking horses this time of night. Uh, wait a minute now. We'll take care of the horses. You just provide the four stalls. <sighs> All right. I can light some lamps for you. We don't have that much trouble getting room for ourselves. Joe? Yeah? You help Hoss with the horses, and Adam and I'll go and see if we can get some rooms at the hotel. All right, Pa. Hey, Paul. It was a terrible long ride today. How's about a little drink before we turn in? Yeah, especially after three weeks' cattle drive. You buying, Pa? Well, I guess I am, since I'm carrying all the money. Hey, what would $30,000 worth of beer look like in here? Well, it all depends. You mean in one big glass? Oh, lots of little ones. One great beckon. <laughs> <laughs> Look, the only thing you boys are going to be drinking is water out of a pump. <laughs> Come on, let's go to the hotel. Oh, which way is the hotel? Uh, halfway down the street, if you can rouse anybody. Thank you very much. Take care of the horses, Jim. Right, boss. Take it easy, Billy. We sent for the doctor and sure. There were three of them. They all wore masks. You fired a shot at Henry there. Yes, uh, he's dead. All right, Billy, we've organized a posse. Now tell me what you can remember about them. Like I said, they all wore masks and dusters. One was a big fella. Another sort of medium, and, and, and the third one looked like a kid. That's all? That's all you remember? No, they, they stuck some money in the saddlebags. Saddlebags? What kind? Well, they had a mark on them. It looked like a pine tree. Sheriff? Sheriff, I know who those men are. What do you mean, Artie? Late last night, four men come into my liver stable, and I noticed that one of them had some saddlebags with a pine tree on it. Well, where'd they go, and how long ago? They didn't go no place. These ways, their horses were still there when I come running over here. Tell you what, let's uh, let's have some breakfast first, then we'll come back and finish up. Ain't nothing like breakfast to show a change in a man, is it, Joe? Yeah, about ten pounds, I think. <laughs> You're the one, Sheriff. Good morning, gentlemen. You going somewhere? Morning. No, we're just just going out to breakfast. You men are new in town. What's your names? Well, the 
Name's Cartwright. These are my sons. Those your saddlebags? They certainly are. Why? Well, they might be important. Well, they're very important to us. Why should they interest you? They interest me just enough to arrest you four for robbery and murder. <laughs> now, that's not a very good joke. There's nothing funny about shooting an old man down in cold blood. Now, wait a minute. We, we, we just got into town late last night. We've been at the hotel sleeping. We just came out. Good. You can tell the whole story at your trial. Oh, wait a minute, Sheriff. Shut up, son. Take off that belt. The rest of you do the same. Now, look, you, you must be mistaken, Sheriff. We'll find that out soon enough. Stan, get their guns. Take those saddlebags and bring them along to the office. Now, there's a lot of money in those saddlebags. Yeah, we know. All right, let's go. What a nice old man Henry Payne was. One of the best. Well, what are you going to do about it? Yeah. I say jail is too good a place for these murders. Now you listen to me. There'll be no lynching. Not in this town, as long as I represent law and order. These men are going to get a fair trial. They're proven guilty, they'll be punished. I say forget the trial. Let's hang him now. You. How about you? And how about you, Artie? How would you like the responsibility if later these men are proven innocent? All right. There'll be a trial over at the saloon tomorrow. I'll talk to the judge and have him get a jury. If any of you try to break into my jail, I'll arrest you and throw you right into a cell along with these men. Get on about your business. Come on inside, you say for it. Now, look, Sheriff, I think we're entitled to some kind of an explanation. Inside, inside, inside. I'll explain all you want. Sheriff. Yeah? You come here a minute? I'll be right back. What? I want you to look at something. Look at all this beautiful money. Now, what did I tell you? Just like I heard him say, $30,000. He sure was right, wasn't he, Sheriff? Yeah. Well, take care of it. I'm going to finish questioning the prisoners. We'll do that, Sheriff. We sure will do that. $30,000, Sheriff. That's an awful lot of money, ain't it? Yeah. It sure is. Cartwright, where'd you get all that money we found in your saddlebags? I've been telling you, Sheriff, we, we drove our cattle to market and we were on our way back to Virginia City to deposit the money there. You got a bill of sale for the cattle? Well, certainly I've got a bill of sale. There. Well, it looks legal enough to me. Now, Sheriff, uh, would it make any sense that anybody with that kind of money would have to rob a bank? No. No, I gotta admit, it doesn't seem likely. But I'm gonna have to check the serial numbers of these bills against those stolen from the bank. Good. And that'll prove exactly what I've been telling you. Well, frankly, Sheriff, I was beginning to worry a little about... 
If you're innocent, you got nothing to worry about. Tomorrow, we're going to give you a fair, fast trial. If you're proven innocent, you'll all be on your way. Well, if you got to check the serial numbers, why have the trial? For your own protection. The town's pretty riled up about the death of old Henry Payne. Without a trial to prove your innocence, you still might not get out of this town alive. You got a real nice town here, Sheriff. Same as any other town, son. Well, Sheriff's right, Joe. Anyway, we don't seem to have any choice about matters. Don't worry. By this time tomorrow, you'll all be on your way, probably. You know, without that bill of sale, we would have been pretty hard-pressed to prove we didn't take that money. Yeah, that's going to be the key to open that door for us. Well, I think we're going to be all right. That sheriff's no weakling. See the way they handle that mob out in the street? Mm -hmm. Come on, let's get ourselves as comfortable as we can be in here. Yeah. Wake me when breakfast. <laughs> Dad, come it. <laughs> Clear the way. Clear the way. Grab yourself a seat somewhere. Higher feet. Take off your hats. Court of Alkali is now in session. Judge Jackson presiding. Sit down. The jury is ready, Sheriff. Produce your first witness. <coughs> Billy Tyler to the stand. No, sit down. Sit down, son. Over here. You swear to tell the truth, so help you God? I do. Tell the court what happened in the bank. Well, there's not much to tell, Judge. These three men came in with masks on and guns out and forced us to open the safe. Then they tied and gagged us and... Then they went over to the safe and started taking the money out and putting it in a saddlebag. Can you describe the bag, Billy? Yeah, it was just kind of an ordinary leather saddlebag. Except that it kind of had a pine tree brand burned into the side of it. Pine tree brand? What do you mean by that? Well, it was just... Kind of a pine tree brand. Bag like that, Billy? Yeah, that's it. And that, that's the pine tree. Order. Order, please. I see. Well, go ahead. Believe what happened then. Well, uh, then they moved toward the door. and Then one of the men turned around and shot Henry Payne dead. What? All right, hold it. Hold it, hold it, hold it here. Billy, can you describe these robbers? Only that they were different in heights. One was a great big fella. You see the prisoners here. Do they fit your description of the bank robbers? Yeah. Only though there was only three of them in the bank, though. Though maybe the gray-haired fellow might have been keeping lookout on the outside. Well, we didn't ask you that, Billy. You just stick to the things you saw. Well, that, that's all I saw after they killed Henry. Then they just ran out, and the next thing I knew, some people were busting in and untying me. All right, thank you, Billy. You may step down. All right, quiet, quiet order. Quiet or I'll throw you all out. You have merely established that the height of the robbers might match the height of the prisoners, and that the prisoners had a saddlebag marked with a particular brand, the same that the robbers used. But that is not positive nor sufficient proof. Sheriff, have you got another witness? Yes. I'd like to call one of the prisoners as a witness. Mr. Cartwright, will you step forward? Cartwright. Oh. Now we're flying out. You swear to tell the truth to help you, God? I do. I first met Mr. Cartwright in the livery stable shortly after the robbery. How long had you been in town, Mr. Cartwright? Well, uh, we, were, we got into town late the night before last. We stayed in the hotel all that night, and... Uh, we met the sheriff uh, at the stable yesterday morning. And you told me you hadn't even heard of the robbery? That is correct. 
When I arrested you, did you have that bag with you? Yes, of course. My son Adam was, uh, was carrying it. Contained a fairly large amount of money which we'd received from the sale of our cattle. How much money would you say was in that bag, Mr. Cartwright? Sheriff, I can tell you exactly how much money was in that bag. $30,000. How much was that sum that was stolen from the bank, Sheriff? Exactly $30,000. <laughs> Please. Of course, this could be a coincidence, Judge. If Mr. Cartwright had $30,000 of his own, it would seem silly that he would try to steal an equal amount, risk his own life and those of his sons. However, I have a witness that I think will clear things up for us. Thank you, Mr. Cartwright. That's all, Mr. Cartwright. Well, well Sheriff, I... That's all, Mr. Cartwright. Mr. Mason of the Alkali Bank, would you please step forward? You just want to tell the truth, help you God? I do. Mr. Mason, you're the president of the Alkali Bank? I am. Did my deputy bring you a saddlebag full of money yesterday? He did. Did I ask you to check the serial numbers of that money against those stolen from the bank? You did. What were your findings? The numbers compared exactly with the bills stolen from the bank. Order, please. Your Honor, well, Mr. Mason, that can't possibly be. You see, that, that, that money was ours. We got it from the sale of our cattle. I'm sorry, We're... Mr. Cartwright. I also checked those serial numbers. There's no doubt that it was the stolen money. Now, look, Sheriff. Your Honor, I gave this man a bill of sale, a copy of a bill of sale that proves that it, that it was, no it was tricks, our money. No tricks, Mr. What Cartwright. tricks? I never saw a bill of sale. He oh, gave you a bill of sale. Order. 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 Order, please. The verdict is already very clear to me, but we must leave it to the jury to decide. We already come to a decision. They're guilty of robbery and murder. The defendants have been found guilty, and I hereby sentence them to be hanged tomorrow morning at sunup. Why wait till tomorrow? Let's do it now! <laughs> Don't worry, Cartwright. Stan will get your kid. You've had your fast, fair trial. Put him back in the cell. Well, let's go. Can't get far on foot. Spread out.
that was supposed to catch him. What do you mean he disappeared? Well, I'm telling you that's what happened. When his horse ran away, I knowed he had to be in that clump of trees, but he wasn't. Then the posse combed that clean. Did you look up into the trees? You know, he just might have climbed up into it. Well, of course I looked into the trees. What do you think I am? I think you're stupid. That's what I think. All right, all right, that's enough. Besides, there's nothing you can do. His family got a fair and square trial by a judge and a jury. If he comes back to town and tries to make any trouble, he'll get a rope, just like the others. Yeah, that's right. There's nothing he can do, is there, Sheriff? What did I tell you? Didn't I rightly tell you? And it worked. Slicker and greased ice. Even though you was afraid to take the gamble. Shut up, Hardy. Things aren't over yet. No, they will be in the morning, Sheriff. Just a few more hours. You're a great one for big ideas, aren't you, Hardy boy? The only trouble is that you forget the little details that foul up those big ideas. Stan. This saddlebag that we copied, you forgot all about it. I told you to get rid of it. Now go out and bury it somewhere. All right, Sheriff. I'll take care of it. You hear what the sheriff said? Boy, he sure is a dummy. He's too dumb to handle all that money, Sheriff. Maybe he should fall down and die. Enough of that. We've done enough harm to this town already. I was just talking out loud. Tell you what. How about me mixing us a drink? Celebrate? Artie, I've told you to stop counting your chickens. I can't help that, Sheriff. I can't help that. This money is going to get me so far away from that liver stable and the stink and the smell of them horses. Here. Duh, Sheriff. To me and my big ideas and to you and your uh, careful details. Of course you realize that after their testimony this morning, the Cartwrights are onto the whole plan. What difference does that make? They're going to hang tomorrow morning. Now, there's nothing they can say to anybody that's going to change that. Yeah, I know, but I still wish Stan had caught the youngest one. Forget about it. Come on, have another drink. No. Nah. It's bad luck to celebrate. Besides, i got to feed the prisoners. Let me do that. I'd sure like to do that, Sheriff. Why would you like to do that? I just kind of like looking at men that know they're going to die in a few hours, that's all. You're a strange one, Artie. Okay, go ahead. Meal time. Uh, if you'll just step back against that wall there, I'll give you some grub. I do the, uh, I do the man who runs the livery stable where we put up the horses. Yes, sir. That's me. Uh, wait a minute. What are you uh, doing around here? Well, I earn a few extra dollars working for the sheriff every now and then. Oh, yeah. Say, uh, how'd you like to earn a lot of extra dollars? What do you mean, sir? I don't want the sheriff out there to know, but, uh, I gotta send a telegram. Oh. Well, I, I don't, uh, I don't know, Mr. Cart. Right now, that'll be eating a prisoner. Now, that ain't right. Well, it wouldn't be right if we were guilty, but we're innocent. Now, it's not gonna harm anybody just to send a telegram, is it? Well, how are you gonna pay me any money when the sheriff took it all away from you? Well, he, uh, he didn't take it all. I got some. I got about, uh, about fifty dollars here. 
How does that sound? Well, um... Why don't you go ahead and write out the telegram and, uh... I'll stand here and think about it. This is a territorial governor. Yeah. Oh, this is a this is a mighty important message, ain't it? Yeah, it is. Well, I, th I think I better send this a special way. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Oh, um, I'll uh, I'll send this a little bit at a time. That way, I think they ought to be getting in the whole thing in about six months or so. Enjoy your meal, gentlemen. Where's Sheriff Coffee? I need help fast. Well, he took some prisoners down to Carson this morning. What's wrong? I just wrote in from Alkali. My pawn brother's been framed for murder. They're gonna hang there tomorrow morning. What are you talking about? Yeah, there's no time to explain. They rigged a phony trial. We were found guilty. I managed to get away. But, Clem, maybe your badge can help him. I'd sure like to help Joe, but shucks, this is just a deputy's badge. It hardly gives me authority here in Virginia City. It's my family, Clem. Somebody's gotta help. The territorial governor. Maybe he could help. I'll send him a wire. Well, uh, Joe! You can't reach him that way. What do you mean I can't reach him? Well, the lines are down. They're checking them now. How long do you think it'll take? I can't tell. It could be an hour and it could take all day. Look, Clem, do me a favor. Send that message to the governor as soon as you can. Tell him my family needs help. Well, I'll do that, Joe. Where are you going? Out to the ranch to get some men and some guns. That's our only chance if that message doesn't get through. Jim, I need your help. Pond, my brother's got framed for murder and alkali. You're kidding. Now, if we don't get there by sunup with some men and guns, they're going to hang. Don't say any more. We're with you. All right. I'll need a gun and a fresh horse. Take mine. He's saddled and ready to go. All right, thanks. Bob, you ride north. Get as many men as you can. I'll ride east. I'll meet you at Carson's Crossings in two hours. Right. you men know what I want you to do. But I want you to remember that the men that are holding my pawn and brother's prisoners are lawmen. We may have to use guns. If there's anybody here that wants to turn back, I'll understand. I know my family will too. All these men feel exactly the way I do. Just let us know what you want us to do. Thanks. All right, I'm going to ride ahead in Alkali and see what's happening. The rest of you wait here until Bob's men arrive, then follow me in. I'll meet you on the outskirts of town. You wait there until I contact you. And thanks. Good luck. I only knew Joe was all right. <laughs> it's funny. We're in here worrying about him and... He's out there someplace worrying about us. Well, I'm sure if anything can be done, Joe will do it. Sure. He's a pretty smart kid. I sure ribbed him a lot. <clears throat> I hope he knows I didn't mean it. I'm sure he does, son. Good evening, gentlemen. How's everything? What about my son, Joseph? We didn't catch him, but that doesn't make any difference. There's nothing you can do. 
Oh, yes, sir, yes. Even if we die, he'll be back. May take him a week, a month, but he'll be back. He'll get the whole pack of you. He's not going to get nobody. By tomorrow, there'll be wanted posters with his name on them plastered all over this country. You know he's right? Your boy's lucky if he lives out the week. Does it make you feel better being a rich murderer? I'm just doing my duty as sheriff. Tomorrow, I hang some bank robbers. Then the town will know I'm still doing my duty. How are you going to explain your sudden wealth? I don't have to explain anything. The bank got its money back and the town didn't lose a thing. Now just stop worrying about me. You've only got a few hours left. Don't waste them. Strange the things a man thinks of when he knows he's going to die. Like what, huh? I was thinking about the time that Joe took all those guys hand wrestling at the bucket of blood. And you and me had bought him all rounds of drinks to let him do it. We never did tell him, did we? No. You do think of silly things. Mm, what? Oh. Like how green the grass gets in the springtime. Snow in the winter. All the things we take for granted every day. Just silly things. I don't think they're so silly, Hoss. Things that God gave us. Not so silly. Stan, relax. They probably went to bed early so they could be up in time for the hanging. Yeah, I know, but I still don't like it. You heard what Cartwright said about that kid of his, didn't you? Yeah. How do we know he's not out there someplace pointing a gun at us right now? He's one kid against the whole town. Once those posters are out, he won't stand a chance. So stop your worrying, will you, Stan? Go out and make your rounds the same as always. I don't want tonight to be different than any other night. <laughs> After all, we do have a community to protect. <laughs> yeah. I'll go ahead and make my rounds as usual, and then I think I'll turn in. Good. See you bright and early in the morning. Right. Evening, Joyce. Mind if I sit down? You might as well. The room's full of empty chairs. Ah, it's not going to be much longer now, Joyce. In just a little while, I'm going to take you out of here. You know, Stan, I get tired of hearing that. What's it been now? Three years. And I'm still standing in this place eight hours a night trying to get people like you to buy drinks. I know you shouldn't have to do that, Joyce, and, and you're not going to do it much longer. I'm going to see to that. Oh, stop it, Stan. You're full of talk, talk, talk. Find someone else and leave me alone. Well, if you saw the money, then would you believe me? You show me the money and I'll believe you. All right. I'll show you the money tomorrow.
no sign of him. Whatever Joe does now, he's gonna have to do it in front of the whole town. Yeah. Unless they already caught him. Looks like everybody's turned out for the show. People gotta be sick to enjoy a hang. You men have about ten minutes. Is there anything I can do for you? Yeah. Open that door and come in here alone for just about a minute. I'm glad to see that you still have a sense of humor. You know, it's going to be hard to hang brave men. I can't figure him out. Seems proud enough of being a sheriff. Yet he's gonna do something like this for a few measly thousand dollars he'll get after they split it up. Did you find him? Nope, no sign of him anywhere. Did you look over in the saloon? He's always over there mooning over that girl, Joyce. Yeah, I looked there. I talked to the girl, she ain't seen him. What's more, she don't give a hoot if she ever does. Now, Sheriff, I looked all over town, he's nowhere. Ah, he's nervous about this whole thing. When the Cartwrights told him the kid had come back and killed all of us, he, well, he sort of believed it. Well, he's as scared as he is stupid. Never should have dealt him in on this. I've been telling you that. I know what you've been telling me. You sure you ain't been doing something more than just talking? <laughs> you mean, did I kill him? <laughs> no, Sheriff. I must admit the thought did cross my mind, but uh, no. I was just wondering. Oh, Stan will be back here. Yeah. After this thing is all over, he'll be back with his hands reaching out for his share. And the first thing he's going to do is take and blow the whole thing on that, that girl, Joyce. What he does with it's his own business. He took a gamble, the same as you and me. I don't care what either one of you do with the money. That's because you ain't been running a livery stable for the past 10 years. You don't hate horses like I do. Well, I'm going to get me so far away from those... I've heard all of that before, so shut up, will you, Artie? Well, the sun's well up. Better get the prisoners. Let me help you. Why, Artie? Why do you want to do that? Oh, well, Stan ain't around. Somebody's got to give you a hand. You kind of like all this, don't you, Artie? Sure I do. Why not? Besides all that money, it's going to be fun watching them hang. We're gonna need some help. I'll have to go out and deputize a few more men. You stay out of there, Artie. You stay out of there till I get back. Let's get on with it. on. All right, hold it. You're not going to hang anybody, Sheriff. Unless you want to see your deputy hang, too. That won't do you any good, Cartwright. You've already killed one man. You want another man's life on your conscience? Now, speaking of conscience, I think your deputy has a few things to tell the people of Alkali. The three of you got a fair trial. There's nothing you can do. You're one man against the whole town. Just one man? I think you better count again, Sheriff. For 
ugly bunch, ain't they pretty? Yeah. Now nobody moves, nobody gets hurt. We're gonna have another fast, fair trial this morning, just like the one you gave my family. I'd like to call my first witness, your deputy, Stan Mays. All right, Stan, tell him who shot the teller. Tell him who killed the teller. Tell him or so help me, I'll hang you right here. It was Artie. Say it louder. It was Artie. Don't pay any attention to him. You can't listen to the word of a man whose life is being threatened. Shut up, Sheriff. I'm not through with the trial yet. I want to show you my first bit of evidence. Saddlebags with a pine tree brand. It's like the one you have in your office, Sheriff. Only Stan and I dug this one up behind the blacksmith shop. You recognize it, Artie? You ought to. They belong to you. No. No! the gun, Sheriff, and stand right where you are. Oh, stinking horse. Looks like my deputy and Artie had a pretty good plan worked out. I'm certainly glad we found out the truth in time. All right, you men are free to go. And we're sorry about the mistake that we all made. Not yet, Sheriff. The trial's not over just yet. Why don't you remember what you said about that trial? About the serial numbers on those bills found in our saddlebags matching the ones stolen from the bank. That's right. Uh, that's right, I did. But it's quite obvious that my deputy and Hardy here are the ones who switched the stolen money. I, I never dreamed that they were the ones who robbed the bank. Well, look, you... You know, I've been your sheriff for a long time. You all know me well enough to, to know that I couldn't have anything to do with a thing like this. Well, it's true, isn't it? I've worked hard for this town. Let's take a look in your safe, Sheriff. Safe? What are you talking about? You heard what he said. Let's hope men take a look. Now, what possible reason could there be for doing that? Simple. If our money's in that safe, it means you put it there. And you knew it was there all along. I have nothing to hide. I, I, I have nothing to hide. Well, Sheriff, if you have nothing to hide, you won't mind opening your safe. All right, we'll open the safe. That'll make you happy. Money's in the safe just as they said it was. Stan and Artie and I, we stole it. And we put the blame on the Cartwrights. But. But why? We don't understand. You've been a good sheriff for us for a long time. Why, if you needed money, you could have come to any number of us. That's just it, Harry. I didn't need it. Stan and Artie, they had their reasons for wanting the money. Me? I wouldn't have known what to, what to do with it. Well, 
Little brother, I don't know when I was glad to see you. Yeah, what took you so long? <laughs> Ugly looking things, ain't they? Depends on where you're standing. Well, they don't look so bad from down here. I don't know about you fellas, but I don't want to hang around here. 